live from New York. It's the show that's going to offer Brew a full-throated apology in about two minutes. Yeah. It's first three. And first. not for me either. It's from me. So here's the apology. Because <laughs> as you great. know, I this right here, I have my thumb on the pulse of sports media right there. I can feel it beating <laughs> at all times. It's what makes the show just top notch. <laughs> you? Okay. The, and your thumb on the yes. pulse? Okay. This Sorry. is how you start my I'm just telling you. I'm starting the show yeah, this that's, way. It was weird to me too, bro. <laughs> In week three of this year, yeah. after losing to the Dolphins barely, 36-34, mm-hmm. and losing to the Titans by a field goal, mm-hmm. The Chargers beat the Vikings, and Brew, on our morning meeting, says, I think a good question is, should the Chargers fire Brandon Staley after a win in week three? Yeah, after a win. I kindly put my finger on the pulse (laughs) of sports media, and I said, Brew, with all due respect, that's a horrible take, and I don't think we can do it. (laughs) And it turns out you were 100% right. I apologize for ever doubting you, and if there's ever a time machine to go back to week three, Brew, you we should have been, we you been the, the show. story of sports media today. I'm sorry that you you called I, for a guy's if, if job allowed us after to do a win, that topic. and everyone <laughs> mocked you. It would have been your first ever classic category too. You nailed this. And you, you were wrong for months. Well, first, Wilds, thank you for that apology. Thank you, thank you for your humility. Thank you. Because really Nick could do that like every two weeks probably with me. <laughs> I'm on your Look side back, here. Bro, you would have been Bro, right. I'm if you were side. right, I was wrong. But you had the humility to do it. But, Nick, you'll remember this. Yeah. And I, I totally, throughout the entire season, to this point, I stood by this. Because if you remember that game, they had lost. They were 0-2. Mm-hmm. They were up 28-24 on Minnesota. You hate it. Can I explain? Sorry. (laughs) With uh, with less than two minutes left. What happened? It was fourth and one at their own 24. Yeah. And Brandon Staley went for it. Yeah. Okay. You didn't, it wasn't even like uh, Minnesota only needed a field goal. Yeah. They needed a touchdown. So why don't you punt away mm-hmm. and make them get a touchdown, which they probably wouldn't have. They got saved because Kirk Cousins threw the interception. Correct. Okay, and that's why they won the game. And I said, and it wasn't, if that had been a one-off, that's fine. But his first year there, this was his third year. First year, they, he had a lot of a overly signature. aggressive Fourth downs that they went for. They lost a lot of leads in the fourth quarter. And then, of course, they blow the 27-0. Great comeback by Trevor, but still, you're up 27-0 in the second quarter. You should win that game. And so, my feeling was this. Those players worked too hard for a coach to put them in jeopardy because of, I, I would say, ego and you think you're smarter than everybody else, and you're going for it on fourth and one from your own 24, that is ridiculous. And so, yeah, so, I thought he should have been fired, and now he is fired. So here's the thing. I, I agree with where you landed on Staley. We disagree on why. I don't think the fourth downs were a problem. I actually Even think, the one against yeah, Minnesota? Yeah, I actually think it was the only redeeming part of him as a coach. He was a defensive specialist whose defense was bottom five in the league every mm-hmm. year he was there. And had and, been a top And had been good and invested there. more in the defense. He clearly lost his players. A few weeks ago he was asked, how can you, you know, believe the players are still getting the message? And he's like, well, we're not getting blown out. We're in close games. And then all of a sudden <laughs> they're down 42 nothing against a team that it was, a th- it was involved in a 3 nothing game right. the previous week. But here's the bad news for the Chargers. Tom Telesco was a bigger problem than Brandon Staley. He got fired. Tom Telesco's mistakes are not easily wiped away. That's the GM. The the Chargers have a long, cold winter ahead of them. Their first-round picks, not worked out. Quentin Johnston is having one of the least productive first-round wide receiver seasons of recent memory. Kenneth Murray, they drafted in the same draft as Justin Herbert, is not going to probably be on the team next year. The big free agent acquisition was J.C. Jackson. Khalil Mack, after a down year last year, has been excellent this year, but he's $36 million on their books next year, so he won't be back. Their two wide receivers, Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, combined for $67 million on their books next mm. year, so they might not be back. And Joey Bosa has not lived up to the 
contract due to injury. Derwin James is a good safety paid like he is the best safety in the league. The Chargers are in the second worst cap situation of anybody in the league. Only this, uh, the New Orleans Saints are worse. They have two cornerstone guys. Their quarterback and their left tackle. Everybody else is either underachieving or not achieving up to the level of their contract or they're getting older and older. Austin Eckler is going to be a free agent. I sell that to say this. This is not that attractive of a job. Mm. This is not a quick turnaround. Now, it's more attractive than the jobs with no quarterback and no – That's the thing. The The hardest position to fill, you got it. Chicago is a more attractive job. I don't know. They, they, they haven't had a great quarterback the, since Sid Luck. The, so they're going to have they're going to have the number one pick, infinite cap space almost, and an extra pick from trading Justin if they draft the quarterback mm-hmm. number one. I think but it's still a, it's still a risk because you don't I, know if you're going to get a quarterback. I'm telling you, even I, if Kay, I, he might not be great. I understand that. I'm t- the point that I'm trying to make is. If the Chargers have an A plus hire, they don't have the next year. They're going to be pairing away talent. They don't have the mm. roster next year of a playoff team. Yeah. They are going to have to dig themselves out of this hole. I do not think it is a quick turnaround. I do not think we're going to look at the Chargers next year and say, "Oh, the only thing wrong with them was their coach." I, I think know. the Can coach I, did a bad job. Here's what I say quickly. Go. Obviously, the most important position is quarterback. They have that. And in football, more so than any of the other other two major sports, baseball and basketball, coaching makes a huge difference. We've seen Andy Reid and Harbaugh and others turn teams around immediately that were bad. And so if they get the right guy – they could turn it around, and some of these guys, you mean, you're right, Derwin James and Khalil and, I mean, Bosa, they got yeah. names yeah, that haven't played well, but I, I do put a lot of that I, on Staley. If Herbert's the guy, he should make it work. Bake Show is down in Tampa Bay, and he's under 500, but he's still tied for first place at the same time. He is, though, but he's playing you well. in that Bake Show to Herbert? No, I, yeah, because Bake Show is making something an, a non-ideal situation Work. I don't think C.J. Stroud is in the ideal yes, situation, and he's go. like, you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to make it work. I agree. I, I agree. All that. The point that I'm just trying to make very quickly: Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Khalil Mack, Joey Bosa. Those four guys. Three of them will not be on the team next year. So this Chargers team that we're like, oh, they have all this talent. Whoever comes mm-hmm. into it is going to come into a team with Justin Herbert and a franchise left tackle and a whole bunch of pieces they're going to have to find and build. I think it's going to be a couple years before they're a double-digit win team, best-case scenario. Wow. Okay. Uh, so there you go. Cowboys, Bills. <laughs> Just A+. Plus. Mike is he's super charismatic. He's gotten better as the year has gone I think he's the, NBA, the NFL's Anthony Edwards. He's fantastic. Like, I'm just entertained like every that. time he talks. He's charismatic. Well, Anthony Edwards on Jordan. The, uh, yeah, I love ahead, that. Take great take. It. Okay. It's great. Sorry. It's great. Go, take. Bro, who you got in this one? Well, look, there are a lot of reasons to like the Bills, right? Obviously, it's going to be cold up there. It's supposed to maybe even rain, all right? Uh, Dallas isn't great on the road. Mm-hmm. Not only 3-3, three and three, they lost to Arizona on the road. They, they barely beat the Chargers, and we, all, we know what happened in San Francisco. So, there are a lot of reasons to think with the Bills being desperate, you know, that they're going to get this game. And I'm going to say this. I hope I'm wrong. Not because I dislike or hate the Cowboys, But because I I do want Buffalo in the playoffs because I think they'll make it more exciting. Whether they win the Avis, they'll make it more exciting. They got one of the best quarterbacks in the league. I'd like to see them make the playoffs. But I I hope I'm wrong, like I said, but I'm going with Dallas. Oh, I'm shocked by that. I think Dallas is rolling, obviously. Uh, Buffalo's defense already was banged up. Now you're going to be without Micah Hyde. Espen- Espenessa has Nessa's been hell playing of a great. Yep. Absolutely. So he's out. Yeah. So, That's right. again, of course, Buffalo, who knows? Josh Allen could have a Superman game. But yeah. I think Dallas is going to get I think this. that is exactly right. This is the exact type of game Buffalo loses. The exact type of game. Right when people are buying back in. Yep. They disappoint you. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I understand they beat my team and good for them on that regard. I do not think they have the recent resume of a team that should have had people bought all the way back in. Their last month of football is a loss so devastating they fired their offensive coordinator. They rolled Tim Boyle. They then had a loss where against the Eagles where, yes, the offense played well. And then Sean McDermott took the ball out of Josh Allen's hands. And then a a game against the Chiefs where they played well for a quarter and a half and then hung on for dear life at the end. It's not like this is 
And I, you guys know I have my questions about the Broncos. But it's not the Broncos profile. A team that started just god-awful and now has been hot right. for two months. And so here's, though, so I think because of the defensive injuries, I think Dallas, Dak, or not just because of, but in small part because of that and also because they're just rolling offensively, Dak is going to cook. I think Josh is going to throw one to Bland flat. Ooh. I just well, yeah, I, I don't they know take about, it away and yeah, he gives it away. I don't so, know about a yeah, pick I six, agree. but here is my – uh, here's my Monday prediction. Because I think the Bills are going to lose. I think it's on the board that this is their, you know, just their second multi-score loss in the last three years. They've only lost, uh, they've only been beaten by more than one score once in the last three seasons. They play close games or they blow people out. I think Dallas is going to win convincingly. I also think Miami's going to win against the Jets. And the Dolphins are going to be 10-4 and four, and the Bills are going to be 7-7. Seven and seven. And do you know what's going to be on talk shows on Monday? Well, when you look at it, Buffalo just has the Chargers and the Patriots coming up. Miami's got Dallas and Baltimore coming up. Could Buffalo still win the AFC East? Because if Buffalo goes 3-0 and and Miami goes 0-3, mm -hmm. they'll still be alive. The Bills can be, for the third straight week, on a Monday morning in 11th place in the AFC, having gone win-loss, 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 and for the third straight week, people will try to convince themselves, oh, this is a team nobody wants to face. Because they, they get the respect and margin of error of a multi-time champion despite having won nothing. And we're seeing that in the commentary all week. We're seeing it in the point spread. And I think even if Dallas wins, we will see it on Monday. I would agree with you that that would be ridiculous for people to really go all out. Like, they're still alive. Yeah. But that is a legitimate scenario, right? I mean, I'm not saying you lead with it 100%. and you really push it. But, yeah, that could happen. That last game against Miami could come down to the division because they're, you know, because of the schedules. You're, are you at all worried? Dallas is 3-3 three and three on the road. You can say, all right, you almost won the Eagles game. The Arizona game was a fluke. You got outplayed in San Francisco. It is what it is. Meanwhile, Josh Allen's 5-1 and one in home games. He lost a home game overseas. Yeah. And he's 15-2 and two in November and December over the last four years. So, like, I don't know. It's cold and windy. They love the they dome. They don't play well on the road. But that's – Or they're not – Yeah, but here's, here's the, the thing. They – the Bills are not a cold, windy, snow, bad weather team. I understand it. You think they should be because they are the Buffalo Bills. They built a team for a dome stadium. Right. And when we last saw them in terrible conditions, they got nothing going against Cincinnati in their stadium mm -hmm. in the playoffs. And I understand that the Bills, and I'm not criticizing you for this, that record is their regular season record in December and January. It's a, But their postseason record doesn't match it. And it's to me, it is just noteworthy because it's not as if they are a team that, oh, when the weather gets cold, they play great. That is not, in my estimation, but they're 15 who they and, have but been. But they're 15-2. and two. I I mean, It's pretty. It's the, the best out of anybody. They, Rogers 13-2, and two, Burroughs 8-2, and two, and Mahomes 14-4. and four. It's up the, Yeah, that at the end of the year, we've seen them the last few years get hot at the end of the season. I do not think that is the team we are seeing right now. We, we just saw them play a December game, mm -hmm. and in my opinion, try to give it away at the end like I with their own play calling and then their own defense at the end I don't think to me I didn't watch that Chiefs game be like man the Bills are firing they look great early they, they look great early saying, and then the up. moment Josh yeah. threw the pick everything went left for him. yeah okay uh Super Bowl odds San Francisco's at one Ravens are at two Chiefs who can't score are at three the Eagles uh, who Dallas just blew out are at four then it's Miami and finally Dallas which feels surprisingly low do, Nick, we'll start with you since you have the Cowboys going to the Super Bowl. Do you, the Cowboys deserve to be favorites if they beat the Bills. So here's the thing. Those odds are indicating that Vegas thinks, understandably, that Dallas is going to be on the road the whole playoffs. So you, if you might be like, wait, that, those odds don't really make sense. It's just because right now they are a huge dogs to get the bye and significant dogs to win the division, which means they would essentially be on the road the entirety of the postseason. If they win and Philly loses, then I and Dallas is all of a sudden in position to at worst be the two seed and just need one San Francisco loss 
lost to be the one seed, then yes, I think they should be the favorites. If they, as long as they are the five, I understand why you're saying they shouldn't be the favorites. Mm-hmm. But in my opinion, Dallas for two months now has been the best team in football. And as soon as they can, you know, get level footing when it comes from a path to the Super Bowl standpoint, at least winning the division mm-hmm. where they would be at home, then I think they should be the favorites. I understand the Niners have owned them, but for a Cowboys Niners comp, we saw that that exact thing in reverse 30 years ago, just for some context. Just for some context, if you would, bro, years ago. where the Cowboys <laughs> beat the Niners in back to back regular seasons and back to back postseasons until the Niners beat the Cowboys in the postseason that year. But the point that I'm making is one team. You know, owning a team, they, they do until they don't. So the idea that the Cowboys, if they played the Niners, can't beat them, I don't agree with that. I certainly don't agree with that if that game's in Dallas. And so if Dallas wins the division, if if the Niners slip up, that game would be in Dallas. Yeah. So I think Dallas is the best team. There's, I think Dallas is the best team in, the, in football right now. There's no way that Dallas should be the favorite if they win this game. Now, if they get the number one seed when the, when the regular season is over – then you have an argument, okay? But based on this one game, and even if Philly loses, there's no what in the world type of rationale would put them ahead of the Niners. I mean, really, the I, Niners would still be the number one seed, and the Niners, not for, I'm not even hung up on the last two playoff games because, like you said, year to year things are different. Just this season, they pounded them. And I get it. I'm not saying it'd be 42 to 10 if they play again, but there is no reason. The Cowboys have had the third easiest schedule in the league. All right. Philly's had the toughest schedule in the mm-hmm. league and they're the same record. Right. But there's well, no can, reason to put Dallas. Wild. Those odds, I think Dallas should be ahead of Miami. I think that's crazy to have Miami ahead of Dallas. But after but, that, I thought it was fair. Again, the, I think the Miami thing is because they could be the one, like they have a cleaner path to the one seed. Their path, the one seed is beat Baltimore. You know what I mean? And, and have, and don't lose one of the other games. But here's my, here's my hang up with your justification on that, Brew. Right now, you think Philadelphia absolutely can beat the Niners in the playoffs. Why does that not apply to Dallas? Based on this season, why does it not apply to Dallas? Because I think Philadelphia is better than Dallas. Why? How? Based because on what? Because they, they beat them in Philadelphia. They lost in Dallas. Yes. And I think they match up with Philly better or with San Francisco. Okay, match. I don't think we have and, any And, and you that. talk about owning. Mm-hmm. San Francisco has owned Dallas. Yes. Dallas has, or uh, San Francisco has not owned Philadelphia. They beat them this year, yes. Yeah. But they have not owned them the way but they have historically, owned Dallas. And Dallas, you asked me the question. Yeah, sorry. Dallas has the late seat, late game, clock management, game management issues in these close games that Philadelphia does yeah, not but, have. But Philly what, shows that they know how to win. Dallas has won blowouts, but, but, but not but many what close I, games. What I would argue is what Philly also has that none of the other contenders have in either conference is a massive glaring weakness. Not a single one of the – we, you guys, put, and we'll talk about it in a moment, talk about the Chiefs' offense all the time as if they're the 27th-ranked offense in football. Mm-hmm. They're a quarter point away from being a top-10 offense. They're right now the 11th offense in football from points perspective. It's not what we're used to, but it is not a glaring how many Achilles. Points are Hold they on. It's not – well, a lot of that's it, it's not, early first Okay, half we can talk about the too. Chiefs in 10 minutes. My point is there is, there is a glaring weakness for Philadelphia. They have a – Awful defense, yeah, okay. according to every metric. So this idea well, they, that they played a much tougher schedule, if, but they're bad. We, but Brew, Jones let them you out. agree they're okay. bad, don't you? Not don't, bad. You I don't think, think Philly has I bad defense? It, I think it needs work. I'm not going to say bad. But everyone likes them up. Say bad. It, right. Sam Howell How likes them up. How they ten and three if everybody lights them up? Because, because they, last because, I heard, no, because look, their Jalen offense has been not quite, Patrick Mahomes. Their, their, their offense has been quite effective this year, but it is undeniable that they have a bad defense. He's dug yeah. in on Philadelphia. No, I, I respect it. Y'all the, think I'm changing? No, I just I think moment that, they to the I think that Niners. if any of us were at, I think that right now, if the, any of our Super Bowl picks were a team that was bottom five in the league in a, anything significant. Offense or defense, yeah. it would be cause for massive concern. I was worried about the Vikings. Particularly if that team, the in the last few weeks as the season is crescendoing, got blown out by its other two contenders in the conference. But that was getting blown out doesn't matter. What that was again? That was two months ago. Okay. I think they're a better team. Okay. Uh, I do. Are think the Chiefs on upset alert? It's next on FS1. 
Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get more from the show and to check out clips from other shows on FS1.